Hey, Salam, can you hear me? Can everybody hear me? If you hear me, please raise your hand or give me a high five. Very good, excellent. Okay. So let's get started. Sorry for the uh, um, uh, difficult start. Let's get started with a prayer of uh, the 11th hour, at least part of it. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord bless us, amen. Make us worthy to pray thankfully. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. In Christ Jesus our Lord, for thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever, amen. Let us give thanks to the beneficent and merciful God, the Father of our Lord, God and Savior, Jesus Christ, for he has covered us, helped us, guarded us, accepted us unto himself, spared us, supported us, and brought us to this hour. Let us also ask him, the Lord, our God, the Pantocrator, to guard us in all peace this holy day and all the days of our life. O Master, Lord, God, the Pantocrator, the Father of our Lord, God and Savior, Jesus Christ, we thank you for every condition, concerning every condition, and in every condition. For you have covered us, helped us, guarded us, accepted us unto yourself, spared us and supported us and brought us to this hour. Therefore, we ask and entreat your goodness, O lover of mankind. Grant us to complete this holy day and all the days of our life in all peace with your fear. All envy, all temptation, all the work of Satan, the counsel of the wicked men, the rising up of enemies, hidden and manifest. Take them away from us and from all your people and from this holy place that is yours. But those things which are good and profitable do provide for us. For it is you who have given us the authority to tread on serpents and scorpions and upon all the power of the enemy. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one through the grace, compassion, and love of mankind of your only begotten Son, our Lord, God, and Savior, Jesus Christ, through whom the glory, the honor, the dominion, the adoration are due unto you with him and the Holy Spirit, the life giver, who is of one essence with you now and at all times and unto the age of all ages. Amen. Have mercy upon me, O God, according to your great mercy and according to the multitude of your compassions, Blot out my iniquity, wash me thoroughly from my iniquity, and cleanse me from my sin. For I am conscious of my iniquity, and my sin is at all times before me. Against you only I have sinned and done evil before you, that you might be just in your sayings and might overcome when you are judged. For behold, I was conceived in iniquities, and in sins my mother conceived me. For behold, you have loved the truth. You have manifested to me the hidden and unrevealed things of your wisdom. You shall sprinkle me with your hyssop and I shall be purified. You shall wash me and I shall be made whiter than snow. You shall make me to hear gladness and joy. The humble bones shall rejoice. Turn away your face from my sins and blot out my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit in my inward parts. Do not cast me away from your face and do not remove your Holy Spirit from me. Give me the joy of your salvation and uphold me with a directing spirit. Then I shall treat, teach the transgressors your ways, and the ungodly men shall turn to you. Deliver me from blood, O God, the God of my salvation, and my tongue shall rejoice in your righteousness. O Lord, you shall open my lips, and my mouth shall declare your praise. For if you desired sacrifice, I would have given it. You do not take pleasure in burnt offerings. The sacrifice of God is a broken spirit, a broken and humbled heart God shall not despise. Do good, O Lord, in your good pleasure to Zion. Let the walls of Jerusalem be built. Then you shall be pleased with sacrifices of righteousness, offering and burnt sacrifices. Then they shall offer calves upon your altar. Alleluia. 
let's pray together Psalm 90 according to the sixth hour Psalm 90 together he who dwells in the help of the Most High shall rest under the shelter of the God of heaven he shall say to the Lord you are my defender and my refuge my God I will hope in him for he shall deliver you from the snare of the hunter and from a troublesome matter he shall overshadow you in the midst of his shoulders and you shall hope under his wings. His truth shall encompass you as a shield, and you shall not be afraid of the terror of the night, nor of an arrow flying in the day, nor of a matter walking in darkness, nor of calamity and demon of noonday. A thousand shall fall at your left hand, and ten thousand at your right hand, but they shall not be able to come near you. Only with your eyes shall you observe and see the reward of sinners. For you, O Lord, are my hope. You have made the Most High your refuge. No evil things shall come upon you, and no plague shall draw near your dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge concerning you, to keep you in, your, in all your ways. They shall bear you up on their hands, lest you stumble your foot against a stone. You shall tread on the serpent and basilisk, and you shall trample on the lion and dragon. For he has hoped in me, and I shall deliver him. I shall protect him, because he has known my name. He shall beseech me, and I shall hear him. I am with him in affliction, and I shall deliver him and glorify him. I shall satisfy him with the length of days, and show him my salvation. Alleluia. Let us pray together the gospel of the 11th hour. Holy, 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 a reading from the holy gospel according to our teacher, St. Luke. May his holy blessings be with us all. Amen. And he arose out of the synagogue and entered into Simon's house. And Simon's wife's mother was taken with a great fever. And they requested him concerning her. And he stood over her and rebuked the fever. And it left her, and immediately she arose and served them. When the sun was setting, all those who had any sick with diverse diseases brought them unto him, and he laid his hands over on every one of them, and he healed them. And devils also came out of many, crying out and saying, You are Christ, the Son of God. And he, rebuking them, did not allow them to speak, for they knew that he was Christ and glory be to God forever and ever. Amen. May the sayings of God be fulfilled in peace. Ten oshtemoko bechrestos nem bekyoten avatos nem pi epnevma et oabji ak e ak soti emmon naina. If the righteous one is scarcely saved, where shall I, the sinner, appear? The burden and heat of the day I did not endure because of the weakness of my humanity. But, O oh, merciful God, count me with the fellows of the eleventh hour. For behold, in iniquities I was conceived, and in sins my mother bore me. Therefore I do not dare to lift up my eyes to heaven, but rather I rely on the abundance of your mercy and love for mankind, crying out and saying, God, forgive me a sinner and have mercy on me. Doxa betri ke eio ke agio pneumati. Hasten, O Savior, to open me, to open to me the fatherly bosoms, for I wasted my life in pleasures and lusts, and the day has passed me and vanished. Therefore, now I rely on the richness of your never ending compassion. So then, do not forsake a submissive heart which is in need of your mercy, for unto you I cry, O Lord, humbly. Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you, and I am no longer worthy to be called your son. So make me as one of your hired servants. Every iniquity I did with prudence and activity, and every sin I committed with eagerness and diligence, and of all torment and judgment, I am worthy. Therefore, Prepare for me the ways of repentance, O Lady the Virgin. For to you I appeal, and through you I seek intercession, and upon you I call to help, lest I might be put to shame. 
and when my soul departs my body attend to me and defeat the conspiracy of the enemies and shut the gates of hates lest they might swallow my soul O you blameless bride of the true bridegroom Lord, hear us and have mercy on us and forgive us our sins. Lord, have mercy. Have mercy, O Lord. Hear us and have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Have mercy, O Lord. Hear us and have mercy. Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison, Lord have mercy. Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison, have mercy, O Lord. Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison, hear us and have mercy. Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison, Lord have mercy. Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison, have mercy, O Lord. Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison, hear us and have mercy. Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison, Lord have mercy. Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison, have mercy, O Lord. Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison, hear us and have mercy. Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison. Holy, holy, holy Lord of Sabaoth, heaven and earth are full of your glory and honor. Have mercy on us, O God the Father, the Pantocrator, O Holy Trinity, have mercy on us. O Lord, God of hosts, be with us, for we have no helper in our hardships and tribulations but you. Absolve, forgive, and remit, O God, our transgressions, those which we have committed willingly and those which we have committed unwillingly those which we have committed knowingly and those which we have committed unknowingly, the hidden and manifest. O Lord, forgive us for the sake of your holy name, which is called upon us. Let it be according to your mercy, O Lord, and not according to our sins. And make us worthy to pray thankfully, our Father of art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. In Christ Jesus, our Lord, for thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The absolution. We thank you, our compassionate King, for you have granted us to pass this day in peace and brought us to the evening thankfully and made us worthy to behold daylight until even. O God, accept our glorification which is offered now and save us from the trickeries of the adversary and abolish all the snares which are set against us. Grant us in this coming night peace without pain or anxiety or unrest or illusion so that we may pass it in peace and chastity and rise up for praises and prayers. And thus at all times and everywhere we glorify your holy name in everything together with the Father who is incomprehensible and without beginning, and the Holy Spirit, the life giver who is of one essence with you, now and at all times and unto the ages of all ages. Amen. Have mercy on us, O God, and have mercy on us who at all times and in every hour in heaven and on earth is worshipped and glorified, Christ our God, the good, the long-suffering, the abundant in mercy, and the great in compassion who loves the righteous and has mercy on the sinners of whom I am chief, who does not wish the death of the sinner, but rather that he returns and lives, who calls all to salvation for the promise of the good things to come. Lord, receive from us our prayers in this hour and in every hour. Ease our life and guide us to fulfill your commandments. Sanctify our spirits, cleanse our bodies, conduct our thoughts, purify our intentions, heal our diseases, forgive us our sins, deliver us from every evil grief and distress of heart, Surround us by your holy angels that by their camp we may be guarded and guided and attain the unity of faith and the knowledge of your imperceptible and infinite glory. For you are blessed forever and ever. Amen. Dear Lord, we thank you that we are here gathered together in your name. We thank you for all your blessings. We thank you that even through the times of trouble and the times of 
hardships and tribulations and pestilence. You are evident and your works are powerful and you, and you work in each and every one of us. Please, Lord, let us always meditate on your presence with us and in us. Let us always understand that you are the God, the Almighty, the powerful, who takes care of everyone. Though we don't understand everything and we will not understand everything because we are limited, but we believe and trust that you are, are our Heavenly Father and our strength in the time of trouble. Please be with everyone who is sick and heal them. Please be with their families. Please be with everyone who is anxious. Give them peace. And let us always be in your hands through the intercession of the Holy Theotokos, St. Mary, and the prayers of all your saints, including Ambabachomius and all, all your saints. Please hear us as we pray thankfully. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. In Christ Jesus, our Lord, for thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Good evening, everyone. I cannot hear you, but if you can hear me, hopefully you can raise your hand. Just give me some feedback because it's a little bit hard to, it takes a lot of faith to talk to a screen. So uh, please bear with me. Uh, yesterday, uh, uh, Tamer uh, led us into the meditation for the love of God. And today I have been asked to uh, meditate or help us meditate together on the power of God. I had a presentation prepared, but unfortunately it seems that I don't know how to share the presentation unless I stop this video and start a new one, which I don't want to do at this time. So. Uh, I'm just going to go with it, and uh, I can send you the slides later on. So, obviously, the, the power of God is essential for us to understand. Uh, it, it's, it's part of who God is. Uh, God's power is in himself, meaning uh, in his own essence. He is the being from everlasting and to, and to everlasting. He does not need to get power from any anything or anybody outside him. We, on the other hand, we are, we have some power, but that power is bestowed on us from God. Uh, God is the only one who is all powerful and has the power in himself. Uh, in many of our prayer, we praise God for his power because that is actually a source for us to be happy and joyful. And the reason for, for that is because the Almighty God who is so powerful is also our Father, and He is also our uh, intercessor, and He is also our hope in this life and the life to come. So His power means a lot for us because we are His children. Uh, when we pray, even in the Lord's Prayer, we say at the end, for thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. In the prayer of thanksgiving, which we just said, we say, let us also ask him, the Lord our God, the Pantocrator, to guard us in all peace this holy day and all the days of our life. Pantocrator means almighty, means that he is the all-powerful God. When we also say the, the Trisagion, we say, Holy God, Holy Mighty, Holy Immortal. He is mighty and He is immortal. And even in the Pascha week, we, uh, we, we say it all the time. Thine is the power, thine is the glory, the blessing and the majesty. Um, we can see God's power in, in many things. We, the, the first thing that comes to mind is in His own creation. So, um, if you think about the vast creation of God, the, the whole universe that we live in, the whole, our entire earth is like a speck, uh, a tiny speck that doesn't even show when you, th when you look at what they, the, you know, the, the pictures that come from, uh, from these big telescopes. You see earth is like a tiny little speck that doesn't even show on the map. And yet 
God is has created all of that and has created it in His wisdom uh, in a way that is beyond our understanding. In the in the Psalm 19, we say, "The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament shows His handiwork." Even in the creed, we say we believe in one God, God the Father, the Pantocrator, who created heaven and earth. Uh, St. Paul in Hebrews says, By faith we understand that the words that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that the things which are seen were not made of things which are visible. What does that mean? It means that what we see has come from non-existence, has come from no matter has come from nothingness. So God alone has the ability to create something out of nothing. We mere mortals, even scientists or engineers or builders or anybody, at most we can put something together out of matter that is already pre-existing. Maybe a chemist will put, you know, a few materials together and, and can create a drug out of it or you know, a builder can put things together and build a house, but we don't have the ability to create out of nothing. God alone is the one who is able to create a whole creation out of nothing. And because he is so powerful, we also have hope that this, in the same way that he created us out of nothing, he can also fix our nature, restore our nature. So that's God's power in his creation. God's power is also... So he is the creator, but he is also creative in the sense that when he created, he created everything with beauty, with um, wisdom, with power, with uh, uh, everything is unique. Uh, each and uh, I think we, we all have a lot of time on our hands these days. So maybe invest some time instead of staring at, um, you know, Facebook or your favorite uh, social app. Maybe you can look outside, out the window and meditate on the beauty of the nature that is around you. It's, it's becoming spring now and uh, the flowers are starting to bud and you can see how beautiful the nature is and how intricate it is and how complex it is and how the colors you know, match and align and, and everything is in order. God is a God of order and a God of beauty and a God of creativity. He, he also gave us some of that creativity because um, uh, as we enjoy art and as we enjoy things that are beautiful around us, we are reflecting the, the creativity that God has bestowed on us. Uh, the psalmist says, I will praise you for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works. And that, my, and that my soul knows very well. Marvelous are your works, and that my soul knows very well. If you look at the human body, especially doctors or people in the medical field, they will know how complex each organ is, how unique it is, how much functionality is packed into such a small organ. A, a small organ like an eye is, is beyond description in terms of its complexity and in terms of its uh, abilities and and yet, yet God is able to make all of that so God is powerful in his creation he is powerful in his creativity yet he is a humble God so in his power he is not a God who wants to keep all of that to himself when he created his creation like the angels and mankind he bestowed on them power, even to the devil he gave power. So the power of the angels is, is huge power. One, one angel in the Old Testament uh, killed 185,000 soldiers of the army of Sennacherib. Um, it's amazing. That's, that's even with a single angel. So how much more God, the Almighty, who is powerful and he is giving some of that power to his creatures and his creation. God is not one who wants to keep um, power to himself or life even to himself. He wants to share life with us. He wants to share power with us. Even to the devil, he gives power so that he gives everyone a fair chance. 
even the devil has a fair chance of uh, either defending or enticing people, however you want to see it. But God does not want to annihilate him right away. He wants to give him a fair chance. That's how humble our God is. God's power is seen in his uh, wonders and miracles and signs and mighty acts that he has done. The Bible is full of stories that show the power of God, like he is giving Moses the power to part the Red Sea, the power to bring forth water from the rock, the, the power to get manna down from the sky uh, and get uh, quail from the sea, the power to do all this to the, to the point where we even say, you know, what is a miracle versus what is, you know, what we consider a miracle versus a normal act or, or something that is normal, it's not even clear to me because even if you think about uh, an apple falling because uh, you let it go from your hand and then it falls down and you say that's normal, that's not a miracle, everything like that happens every day. But in reality, this is actually um, uh, in and of itself something that is, okay, we say that it's by gravity. What is gravity? It's, it's something that we rationalize because it happens every day, but in reality, it's, it's a miracle in and of itself. So someone can think about it as everything is a miracle. It, there is nothing really uh, that is, uh, uh, that th there is no breath, there is no thing that moves, there is no thing that uh, changes without God um, intervening and actually giving it the power to do. Uh, God gives power to even um, turn or change people's heart, which I believe seems to be harder than miracles of parting the sea. Because, uh, you know, if you have kids or you have friends and you would like them to change, you know how hard it is to, or it's impossible for someone to change somebody else's heart. Only God can do that. God can change our hearts. God can make us or help us to repent if we are willing to work with him. Uh, it's amazing how many people are being touched by what is happening around us. Uh, although, of course, there are lots of you know, you know, bad things that are happening with coronavirus, but there are also many, many good things that are happening with coronavirus. People are uh, slowing down, whether willingly or unwillingly, but they are slowing down and they are starting to think, you know, what power do I have, you know, in front of a little virus that is sweeping the whole, not only the whole nation, but the whole world, knows no borders, knows no race, knows no ethnicity, knows no uh, poor versus rich, you know, it can just basically go everywhere. And we are perplexed and we uh, realize all of a sudden how little we are and how poor we are and how much in need of God's power we are. And that's a good thing because if nothing else, God wants this message loud and clear. Without me, you can do nothing. But with me, everything is possible. And that's uh, what, what Job kind of um, concluded after uh, his ho whole long journey with um, with with the per, with the pain and with the trouble that he you know that uh, God allowed him to go uh, through, and at the end chapter forty two he says, "I know that you can do everything, and that no purpose of yours can be withheld from you." قَدْ عَلِمْتُ أَنَّكَ تَسْتَطِيعُ كُلَّ شَيْءٍ وَلَا يَعْصُرُ عَلَيْكَ أَمْرٌ. God is the only being who can do everything. Who Nothing is impossible for him. We can do a few things, but there is none of us who can do everything. God is the only being who can do everything. And this is a message that we need, uh, especially at this time, because we need to know that God is in control and that God can do everything and he will do the right thing at the right time. We just need to trust. God's power is also evident in his holiness. We say, holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. Why is this holiness considered power? Because he is the only one who is sinless. Sin is a sign of weakness or is a form of deficiency or weakness. 
He is the only one without sin, and therefore he is the only one who is holy, has no sin in him whatsoever, has no deficiency in him whatsoever. It's hard for us to imagine what that really means because we're all sinners. We're all, uh, our nature is so um, uh, familiar with sin to the point where it's very hard for us to imagine a being who is totally sinless. And that's why we kneel down before him and we say, holy, holy, holy. So he is powerful in his holiness. He is the only one who is good. Remember the, um, uh, the, rich, the rich young man who went to God and to, uh, to Christ and told him, good teacher, so what do I do to attain heaven? So Jesus looked at him and said, why do you call me good? No one is good but one, that is God. So he wants to say, do you really know that I am God? Or are you just telling me good teacher and you don't know what it means? Because the only one who is actually good is God. And our uh, perceived goodness is just coming or a reflection of God's goodness. There is no good outside God. Many people who are, uh, you know, when we talk about these apologetics uh, discussions, we keep saying, oh, but there are people who don't know God, but they are doing good things. And... We as Christians, we say there is no good outside God. Even the people who do not admit that there is a God are children of God because he created them. And they are doing good out of what's in them from God. Whether they like to admit it or don't admit it, that's a different story. But in, in essence, all goodness comes from God. So we said he's the old holy, he is alone good, and he is alone without sin. The final thing that I want to share with you is that we, when we think about the power of God, we think about the, the greatness, like the power of creation, the power of um, healing, the power of raising the dead, the power of healing the sick and so on. But there is also power in what appears to be his weakness, what appears to he, be his weakness. When we go into the Pascha week, uh, especially the Holy Friday, there is a very nice hymn uh, called O Monogenes, O Monogenes, in which we say, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a long hymn, but I want to just point out one verse out of it. It says, Holy, mighty, who by weakness showed forth what is greater than power. Quddus al-Qawi al-Ladhi azhara bad-da'af ma huwa a'adham min al -qawwa. What does that really mean? Um, it means that God in his greatness, he is so powerful that he, was, he is able to empty himself from his glory, to basically um, allow himself to take on flesh and hide his divinity within this flesh so that people can see him and touch him and be with him and see how God actually is blameless and God actually is uh, living a sanctified life here on earth and, and be a, a role model for all of us. Uh, St. Paul says in Philippians, being in the form of God did not consider it robbery to be equal with God because he is God, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bond servant and coming in the likeness of men and being found in the appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. It is very powerful to understand that, you know, uh, you are, if you are a very powerful person, let's say you are a CEO or a president of the company, it's very hard not to abuse that power. It's very hard not to use it whenever you need to. And he decides to um, put a lid on it, which is his flesh. He decides to keep it uh, undercover, so to speak, okay, so that he can fulfill the salvation on the cross, so that he can go uh, willingly to the cross. And, and willingly was, was also a, a point of uh, power for him, because if people are mocking him on the cross and telling him, if you are the son of God, come down from the cross and we shall see and believe in you. 
you know, if this would be like a Hollywood movie or whatever, you know, he would just go out of the cross and, and you know, with a big loud bang and, you know, kind of the happy ending. He did not do that. He could have done that, but that would have uh, stopped the, the, the whole progress of salvation and, and plan of salvation that he, he had for us to be controlling him, his divinity to the point that he is willing to take on the uh, pain, willing to take on the accusation, the false accusations, willing to take on the beating, the scourging, um, the crucifixion, and enduring that not only in humility, but in love and telling God the Father, please forgive them for they do not know what they are doing. It's the highest uh, highest showing of love and highest showing of his power that he is able to accept humiliation and death even unto the death of the cross. Um, I pray that we all understand the power of God in our lives and that we humble ourselves before his power because we need to understand that we are his workmanship, that we have no power except what is given to us by him and that we need him and that we um, wait for him. It's, uh, I think the biggest uh, trial for us right now is to be sitting at home and actually waiting. And uh, uh, we are all uh, kind of not used to that. We're used to going to work, we're used to uh, shopping, we're used to uh, fidgeting and, and many, many things, but we are not used to stand still or stay still at home. And right now it's actually uh, um, what is asked from us, the hero in this whole, uh, you know, COVID-19 firefighting is actually the one who stays home and, um, you know, uh, exercises social distance from everyone. I think it's a, it's a great time to reflect and a great time to be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am God. That's what God is trying to tell us in this time. It's a time to um, meditate and reflect on the power of God and ask him to come and give us power to endure and give us power to our pain overcome everything through his grace, to him be the glory forever and ever. Amen. Thank you, everyone. I hope I'm not too uh, long for you. I know that there are other uh, things opening up at 8.30. So um, thank you, everyone, and have a great night. And uh, we'll see you tomorrow at 7.30.